Jerry on the right, number two in the player of the year standings. Kevin Jones, 27, so he had a bye this weekend as well. He's on scape shift as we will be underway. Now, one of the dangers here on the scape shift side is that if Jerry runs out a really fast creature, like a Thought Not Seer or a Reality Smasher, uh, scape shift doesn't kill those. No, that guy just gets to stick around. And if, if your Thought Not Seer is able to just connect five times, well, Kevin's dead. So this is similar to the red-green Eldrazi deck. Now, we saw in Eldrazi Winter, there were red-green Eldrazi decks. We see Jerry starting out on Raging Ravine. Those decks never played Eldrazi Mimic. They played Mind Stone instead. They were much of a more big mana deck. Uh, this weekend, is Jerry on anything like Mimics? Nope, there's no Mimics. Uh, Talisman of Impulse is our two mana spell. Four, a full four copies. And the thing about Mimic, you wanted to board it out if you thought that it was going to be blocking. It's just terrible at blocking, and without the Eye of Ugans, you can't guarantee that you'll have good attacks. So I do like not having the Mimics. Jerry will cast Ancient Stirrings. Get a copy of Carpelusen Forest. He'll get cast another Ancient Stirrings. So off Raging Ravine, Kevin may have thought that Jerry was playing Jund. But now that he sees a Carpelusen Forest, he should, he should know that he's playing on something else. Yeah, it, it's weird to see Raging Ravine in Tron. Tron is a deck that's not very good at actually getting a bunch of colored mana. So activating Raging Ravine, not only kind of off plan for them, and just like not something that they're up to. And the Carpelusen Forest, the multiple Ancient Stirrings, uh, Kevin Jones <laughs> knows something weird is happening here. I like these colorless sources. From Jerry, he finds a copy of Kessig Wolf Run. Kevin missed a land drop on turn two. He now casts Sakura Tribe Builder. Now, you might notice that they're players don't have too many cards in their hand. Kevin was on a mulligan to five, Jerry was on a mulligan to six. So that explains some of the slowness coming out in this game. Yeah, and with uh, Kevin stumbling on his mana in a deck that's all about getting seven lands in play, this is clearly punishing Kevin more than Jerry at this stage in the game. Jerry plays Kessig Wolfron and plays his Talisman, Talisman of Impulse. This is a situation with the fact that Kevin is playing Explorers he's playing four Explorer, two Farseek. He would rather have Farseek on a draw like this. Right. The just advantage to explore is when you have an untapped land, explore, and I'll put this in quotes, costs one. <laughs> There's no guarantee that explore actually gets you a land drop as well when you need to find it with the cantrip. Right. And then, especially, this, this issue is compounded with Kevin missing land drops by the fact that Jerry has three world breakers in his deck. And I believe I've spotted one in his hand that wouldn't always come into play against a deck that can ramp as quickly as Scape Shift. But with the awkwardness of the way this game is shaping up, that could be a big factor. So Kevin plays a land, he plays Serum Visions, peeps a card on top, here's, and plays Prismatic Omen to pass the turn. Little surprise, Kevin did have another Explore there, so if the top card was a land, he could have gotten it. But I suppose there's no rush on that. Right. He's got another copy of Omen in hand, a, a Lightning Bolt, and an Explore. The second omen, not really going to do much. There's going to be windows down the road to find Explorer, try to hit a land. The thing about getting an additional land drop, he has to find two lands to really ever capitalize on that advantage. He just finds a window to put omen in the battlefield. Here's Thought Not Seer for Thompson. We'll get to look at Kevin's hand. Two lightning bolts, Prismatic Omen, and Explorer. Now, Prismatic Omen actually does function as a ramp. It's in, very, in a lot of ways, you can think of it as a ramp spell in this map. In this deck, it means that if you scape, normally you have to scape shift on seven lands to deal 18 damage. With an omen in play, you can scape shift on six lands. Correct. Prismatic omen gives all your lands, every basic land type. That includes mountain. Valakut checks mountains. Valakut's not a mountain. You make your count smaller. Also, if you uh, omen scape shift plus six lands, you can kill from any life total, whereas scape shifting on seven lands only deals 18. Mm -hmm. Jerry Stanatz here will take one of the two lightning bolts out of Kevin's hand. So Kevin goes back to reload. He'll cast Serum Visions. Yeah, and that pick for Jerry just makes perfect sense. Two bolts could kill the Thought Not Seer, the second Omen not doing anything. Kevin keeps both cards on top. Uh, does not. <laughs> Prismatic Omen still in play. So two cards on top with these Serum Visions, but Kevin still no land drops. He passes back to Jerry. Back to Thompson. Draws another cousin. This is Eldrazi Temple. There you go. That's no. now the, yeah. We're at Worldbreaker. We're home. Man, those lands were really good, weren't they? You just <laughs> even see him draw and you just remember, man, 
Those things were really unfair. I forgot about that. Yeah, those lands that your opponents frequently mulligan into and then got down to five and killed you very easily on turn four. Yeah, yeah they, they were pretty good. powerful, yeah. I did play against this deck at a recent Modern event, and I got turn two Thought Not Seared off them, and I remembered, you know, okay, it doesn't happen as often, but boy, it's still good. Like, yeah. <laughs> When Lightning Bolt and Abrupt Decays are kind of the flagship removal spells of your format, yeah. four toughness, four mana, especially when you're cheating on mana, that's a huge threshold. Big play by Jerry. He'll go ahead and fetch for a forest and play World Breaker. Now, Kevin has a remand in hand. Oh, my goodness. He's going to remand the World Breaker. Uh, I don't even know if I want to make that play. Yeah, the posturing there, Kevin was ready to slam remand, and then remembered, oh, no, it's that a is a trigger. cast trigger. Right. That means Jerry gets another land destruction spell next turn? That seems excellent. Kevin will cast Explore. Play Steam Vents. At this point, it's not clear what Kevin is actually even playing to. And he'll pass. So Kevin's down to 13. We go back to Tomps and... If Jerry just, for whatever reason, just stops casting World Breaker, I don't know, like drops it on the ground and just never casts it again, then we could get up to Cryptic Command. Right. So the way that Scape Shift decks win from a lot of unlosable, bo difficult board states is if they hit running Cryptic Commands, they can tap team and draw until they get up to six lands and then Scape Shift out their opponent. Right. With it coming down this turn, it's a five power creature. The attack put Kevin down to nine. Thought Not Seer, World Breaker, that's nine yeah, right there. Yeah, that's enough. Kevin did draw a Cryptic on that last turn, but the World Breaker flexing its arm there, getting Kevin's lands on consecutive turns, Kevin not able to cast the Cryptic Command. Yep, big part of that game there, probably the entire story realistically. Kevin mulliganing to five, stumbling on land drops, not really having a chance to win that game. So game one over to Red Green Eldrazi and Jerry Thompson. Now, we're going to look at the sideboards here. I'm not sure that we have seen how this matchup plays out yet. There was <laughs> enough mulliganing in that game that it seemed like you know, in the land of Dex, fighting at half strength, Jerry's 50% beats beat Kevin's 30%. Looking at the sideboards, we'll start over Kevin's side. He has four obstinate Baylots, two Dispels, two Worm Coral Engines, two Nature's Claim, two Shatterstorm, one Malyra, one Negate, and one Sudden Shock. None of these cards look good whatsoever. There's an argument for Worm Coil Engine. It's just yeah. a big, meaty creature you can get to tango with Jerry's big, meaty creatures. Worm Coil is kind of the king in that arena. There's not a lot of six power creatures for Jerry, so I don't hate Worm Coil Engine, particularly if there's something just like kind of dead air in our deck that we can board out for Worm Coil. I like that. Yeah, Worm Coil Engine is very good at fighting Eldrazi, right. for example. Negate is something we can consider as well. I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see that one come in. There's a few things, like you can get Ancient Stirrings, kind of get at Jerry's consistency, but yeah. uh, it's not the most exciting spell. So back in Eldrazi Winter, Negate was not particularly good against the Eldrazi deck because the deck was mostly creatures. Now, right. that's no longer the case on Jerry's side? Yeah, he hinges, uh, I wouldn't say especially heavily, but Ancient Stirrings and Sylvan Scrying are important cards in Jerry's deck. So a negate could kind of cripple his early game and his early mana development. That could set him back. There is only one copy, so it, it doesn't hurt you too much to bring it in, and it could matter a lot. So that one could certainly be coming in for Jones here, and it wouldn't surprise me to see the negate. All right, well, on Thompson's side, his sideboard for today is two Graft Digger's Cage, two Spellskites, two Feed the Clan, three Feed the Clan, one All is Dust, a Ghost Quarter, two Ancient Grudges, two Natural States, and two Warping Whales. Warping Whale's the uh, slam dunk here. We're going to see both copies of those coming in. They counter the Hallmark card Scape Shift. Yeah, they counter sorceries. Right. There's a few other sorceries you could tag in Kevin's list, depending on how his development yeah. is going. Explore, so. Farseek, Serum Visions. Right. Jerry Thompson's a big fan of Ghost Quarter. Um, against Scape Shift, it has applications. If there's a Valakut hanging out and we just like have a Prismatic Omen and we're playing that game, it's not bad. Yeah, it's... It's actually going to be weak against Kevin's build. Kevin's build plays four copies of Valakut and then the Prismatic Omens, so it's not great. Right. The thing is, though, Jerry, I, I don't think that he's really going to need the Cavern of Souls in the main deck. Uh, it, it's fine. It's there pretty are, free. There are counters in uh, in uh, Kevin's list. We could board out, say, the Kessig Wolf run. That one's kind of lame. Just sure. a colorless land that could be more impactful. Well, he does have one Ghost Quarter in the main, so this would actually be the second one, right? Right. Yeah, in, in Ghost Quarter, the thing is, he wants colorless mana anyway. He's casting cards where colorless matters. Matter Reshaper, Thought Not Seer, Reality Smasher. We could even just see him bring in this extra land. That, that's an option that yeah, Jerry he has. does have Kozilek's Returns. Yeah, and 
those Kozilek's returns definitely not good in this matchup. So he definitely just wants a way to get those returns out of his deck. Keep here from Kevin Jones for game two. Jerry's going to go ahead and go back to six. Now, if you are joining us on Twitch this weekend, we have a lot. First of all, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and watching us on Twitch TV. You guys at home are the people who make the SCG Tour possible. We have a new subscription service available this weekend. This one is actually pretty interesting. So we've always had subscriber-only chat and emoticons this is for 4 dollars a month. But a new thing we are premiering this weekend, this is a You Decide the Quarter Final. So if you haven't subscribed with us on Twitch, you may want to do this. After the Top 8 announcement on Sunday, there will be a live poll on the Twitch chat for subscribers to vote in, deciding of the decks that make top eight and the players that make top eight, which matchup you'd like us to feature as our primary match for top eight coverage. We'll be doing that this weekend. So if you're going to tune in, especially tomorrow, head on over to twitch.tv and sign up for the subscribers only. We'll also let you chat with us and be part of the community all weekend. Yeah, this is a really awesome feature for our subscribers. Uh, previously, you know, sometimes people don't see the quarterfinal that they are maybe more excited about. Now you get a voice in that. Instead of saying, hey, Nick Miller, you picked the wrong match, you can say, don't blame me, I voted for Kodos. Or, you know, or if, you're, I you if you're lucky, I get the match you want. Wasn't the thing that if you voted for Kodos or against Kodos, it didn't matter? Right. It was, I forget what the other one's name uh, was. Kane and Kodos. Kane and Kodos. Kevin Jones on the play. Starts with Steam Vents tapped. Jerry on a mulligan to six. Land Light. He has kept Grove of the Burn Willow's Ancient Stirrings. Carpluse and Forest. So he will put Kevin to 21. Cast Ancient Stirrings. Stirrings at the height of its power level in Jerry's deck is finding a specific land he wants, finding a threat that he wants. In this hand, he just needs a land. Isn't it? I mean, I would assume this card always wants to find Eldrazi Temple on every board state. In or the, just about. In the early stages of the game, you're absolutely yeah. right. He'll get Cavern of Souls. You mentioned the uncounterability does matter here. Kevin does play four copies of Remand and four copies of Cryptic Command. Yep. With the World Breaker, it has a cast trigger. With things like Thought Not Seer, Reality Smasher, Matter Reshaper, we want them to enter the battlefield. Now, this keep from Kevin. He plays Basic Island and passes back to Jerry. He does not appear to have a green mana source in play it, and that is pretty big for the deck. It, without a ramp, without ramping at all, this is a very fair magic deck. Jerry will cast Sylvan Scrying. And with Kevin not remanding any spell on site. I expected, if he was going to keep a hand without green mana, I expected him to have a remand. Which exactly. Is just surprised that this seeing Sylvan Scrying is just happening? Right. It seems like if we're not playing a green source, we've kept a land without a ramp spell or a green source to cast it and remand. That seems like too much. I either want to be ramping up on my mana or I want to be remanding my opponent's spells. If I'm just going to play land drops, that's not enough. You see Kevin on turn three just plays a Valakut the Molten Pinnacle tapped. And that's, this doesn't do anything. That's not going to help either of these issues. We are one mana closer to Cryptic Command, so there's another blue source. We can start doing that. Matter Reshaper will be the turn three play for Thompson. So keep in mind with this blue Scape Shift deck, this regular one, Valakut cannot be triggered without a Prismatic Omen in play or a casting a Scape Shift. He, can't, he does not actually have enough... He, in theory, has enough mountains to just start hitting land drops, but he's, he's not going to do that. Yeah, and if he does start doing that, he can't naturally just Scape deal enough damage anymore. to win the game unless he has a bunch of Valakuts. So Jerry, his draw for the turn was Eldrazi Temple. As is to be expected, it's great. It's always great. However, Kevin's all blue cards hand. This Cryptic Command seems like it'll be pretty good. Okay, with that uh, blue source untap that turn and the Cryptic Command, we're starting to see why Kevin's hand was defensible. Yeah, and the interesting thing is because of Cavern Souls, he cannot counter the... The Thought Not Seer. What he did is he cast, with the Enter the Battlefield trigger on the stack, he cast Cryptic Command to bounce the Thought Not Seer to Jerry's hand and draw a card. So what will happen is that Kevin will draw the card first, and then Jerry will get to exile from Kevin's hand. And that's what we see here. And it looks like Kevin has a bunch of scape shifts. So he's just yeah, trying to get... Yeah, it's the card you want multiples, but... Yeah, he's just trying to get that draw trigger to help him find a bunch of ramp spells or keep hitting his land yeah. drops at least. And if the Thought Not Seer just resolves, then he's just... Jerry's just going to pluck the Cryptic Command. So 
Kevin has three scape ships in hand. He has off those draws off Cryptic Command and the Thought Seer, he drew Misty Rainforest and Flooded Grove. So there are the green sources he was looking for. Yeah, Flooded Grove is a big one. On its own, it gives you your double green. So that can cast scape shift. Right. I don't. So here's a question for Jerry. Once Kevin hits seven land in that scape shift, it's going to be game over. Maybe, I guess if Jerry stays at 19, then he'll need an eighth land. Right. Jerry's going to have to kill Kevin before he gets up to that land count, which well, that seems pretty high right now. Or he has to find a way to exile all three scape shifts. Yeah, it's three scape, scape shifts full of tribe elders. So it looks like he's going to try to get all the scape shifts. Here's the first one. Right. With two tribe elders, our opponent's already on four lands. Evidence that the next two lands are going to be coming in, uh, entering the battlefield on the, over the course of the next two turns. It's not clear that taking the sack score tribe elder would do anything. Well, so Kevin has a play. Next turn of Flooded Grove, both tribe elders. Sack them both, untap, scape shift win. Right. So if Jerry's taking a scape, one scape shift, it doesn't make sense unless he gets all three. How does he get all three in time? I just don't see it. He would need a way to cast two Thought Not Seers on the following turn. Uh, that looks to be impossible given yeah. the mana already available. Maybe if he draws some World Breakers, he can World Break down those lands and buy himself some turns. Right. Here's Flooded Grove from Kevin. That'll make two green. He's he going to go for Tribe Elder and Tribe Elder. That's exactly the play that Jerry knew about. The other side of things is that given the board presence that Jerry has, his clock is far too anemic to win the game before Kevin just naturally gets up to enough lands. Yeah. So he'll attack with Matter Shaper. Kevin will block, sacrifice, go get a forest. Six lands in play. And Kevin has this the eight, man, eight land scape shift. Sack Tribe Elder can get another forest. That's seven mana. He has a Misty Rainforest in hand. That's eight. He can cast. He can sacrifice all the lands but the Valakut, getting the second Valakut and six mountains. That will deal 36. So the question here. Now... Here's the option. What if Jerry has drawn Warping Whale? So second Thought Not Seer. Thought Not Seer comes back down, exiles the second scape shift. You're right. He's left up Grove of the, burn of the Burn Willows. That can make colorless. Right. So the second Thought Not Seer takes the second scape shift. shift. There's it, one remaining. One eight. Yeah, Warping Whale would do it. Kevin is drawing up to eight lands. A remand or a cryptic command off the top could fight this battle. It would win it. Yep. Right. But... If Warping Whale's here, Jerry is still live. That sideboard card, two of them in the deck for Jerry. We'll see what Kevin drew. I think he drew Cryptic Command, so that's that takes all the excitement out of this one. Right. Or all the guesswork, I would I guess <laughs> would say. Kevin's just got him. Unless Kevin outrageously poorly taps his mana. I don't even know if there's an option for him to tap himself no, off the Cryptic Command here. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and shock for the Steam Vents. Four mana for Scape Shift. And he'll float the extra four. That's how you want to do this. Mm -hmm. And here's Scape Shift with four mana floating. Jerry doesn't even have the Warping Wheel. We're on to game three. Yep. Represented there. Um, I don't think that there's a very high chance that Kevin just doesn't cast Scape Shift. He can't really play around it. I mean, if Jerry had the Warping Whale and Kevin did not draw Cryptic Command, that could have been game over. Right. Given he, that he drew the Cryptic Command, he's 100% just playing his eighth land, running out of the Scape Shift. Yeah. There's just nothing that could go wrong. But, I mean, Jerry played to the outs that he had, and they just were far too slim. So your game two winner is Kevin Jones. He evens it up at one game apiece as the players will now play a third deciding game. Looking back at the sideboards of the two players, you mentioned that really it's just Worm Coil Engine for Kevin Jones. Worm Coil Engine, and we have Negate. Negate in that spot could have also been a top deck to fight over Warping Whale. I'm warming up a little bit more to this card as we see more happen. It's fine. It's fine. I think what's interesting is both players in this matchup have a lot of cards that don't do very much already. You know, there are four lightning bolts in Kevin's deck. How many of those does he want? Yeah, it only kills Mattery Shaper, but then Mattery Shaper just always replaces itself. I like sideboarding that one out. So you see the jersey there? This is the newly announced team for Season 2 of the SCG Tour. It is Metagame Gurus, one of the members here, Kevin Jones. 
You may know him from two Players' Championship appearances. The 28-year-old from Kingstown, New York, has eight Open Series top eights, including that signature win with Jess Guy that he picked up back in New Jersey a while ago. Uh, he, through and through, is has styles of decks he likes. He likes these blue tempo decks favoring creatures over tempo a lot of the time. You know, he's definitely always a Mantis Rider player. He won the Eternal Leg Weekend Legacy Championships with Blue Red Delver. Uh, something that I certainly, you know, this is a style which you and him are, are similar on, but yet still different, right? Yeah, the actual card choices that he makes are generally different than the ones that I would make, but we have a lot of overlap in archetypes. I'm also kind of surprised that we're not seeing Kevin on an Ancestral Vision deck, on some kind of Jeskai burn deck in Modern. That deck gained a lot of stock with Vision. Something with Snapcaster Mage and Restoration Angel seems right in Kevin's wheelhouse. Yeah, the Plage College Tennis over at Pace University was a, a walk-on, actually, for it. So a little bit of some at athletic prowess there as well. Yeah, I mean, he's like 12 feet tall, so that helps a lot in athletics. Yeah, you can't hit lobs over him, you know, because he just has there's a not wide space. He has a, there's a wide range of the court he's going to be able to return your shot from as well. Hey, Raz, man, we have a spec, so we have to zoom the camera actually really far out. He looks normal there, but He's but actually it, it, a yeah. monster. He's actually a monster. <laughs> yeah, Kevin's a great guy. Uh, get a chance to interact with him between rounds. A lot of opens. Um, this is all just fun ribbing. For, goes by the nickname of Daddy. A nickname he gave himself. <laughs> right. He's just a delight. Real this pleasure. Great. Real pleasure to interact with. He's always having fun too. You know, he he has some. Uh, he's a pretty good resume for Magic. But even when he's losing. He'll always tell you, you know, I'm having fun. I like my deck. This magic's great. Wants to get to a third consecutive player's championship. Has said this year would be the, will be the hardest one for him. What he's been trying to work on is he's got those high finishes at Opens. Because that his week-in, week-out performance is something he wants to work on. Yep. Danger here. Game three, Jerry's on the play, plays a copy of Eldrazi Temple. We're oh, live. Oh. We're live for turn oh, two. Gosh. Thought not. Do there, we have it? There's another temple in Jerry's hand. He's thinking way too much for it to be a thought not. No, it's just going to be a turn two Mattery Shaper, but these are the hands that got the deck banned. Right. It's going... In the dark, it's just a bad matchup for everyone. So we see Mattery Shaper from Thompson and Sakura Tribe Elder for Jones. And when one player is playing turn three thought Reality Smashers and the other one's playing Explore, you just feel like we're not playing the same format. It's the same game. Yeah. The first time playing against Eldrazi, I played a Farseek, and then my opponent attacked me for 10 with a Mimic and Smasher. And I was thinking, I don't know what I registered, but it's this isn't good. <laughs> my cards are quantity, substantially worse than yours at everything. Thompson's starting with Ancient Stirrings here. I assume he's looking for a Thought Knot Seer, so we can get some information on sure. Kevin's hand, be able to play that in turn three. Still very good on turn three. He'll get Cavern of Souls. It looks like he had the choice of Eldrazi Temple or Cavern of Souls here. He went with Cavern. Swings Matter Shaper. Kevin will block before damage sacrifice. Yeah, Thompson already has a World Breaker. Just wants to be able to start resolving Eldrazi yeah. and closing this game. He plays Talisman of, of Impulse. He does have another Eldrazi Temple in his hand next turn, which means on turn four, he can play seven mana uncounterable Eldrazi spells. That's reasonable, right? Yeah, a 5-7 Stone Rain. Uncounterable. I mean, Kevin, Kevin could have the Cryptic Command, but... Uh, he could return it to Jerry's hand so that Jerry could Stone Rain him again next yeah, turn. Yeah, that's great. Kevin will play a land and pass. Leaves up Cryptic. This is a pretty strong sign that Kevin just oh. doesn't have access to a ramp spell in his hand. Jerry drew Thonats here for the turn, even better. You see World Breaker, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Eldrazi Temple, Thonats here is Jerry's hand. Just I'm relatively yeah. convinced that we're just jamming World Breaker here. This is like the first turn where drawing Thought Not Seer isn't great immediately. We could see him lead on it, but I'm, I'm biased towards the World Breaker right now. Just cast that, you use all of your mana, Stone Rain. Here's World Breaker, uncounterable. Yeah, <laughs> you see Kevin's looking at this. Yeah, I guess that happens. What he's actually saying is, that's messed up, Jerry. So what, this is turn four? Turn, turn, yeah, turn four. 
It's reasonable. He will. We'll see what he exiles. I, probably the stomping ground. Looks like he went for a basic island. Kevin goes out and fetches for a breeding pool untapped. Oh my, he is going to cryptic to. Okay, to bounce Mattery Shaper to Jerry's hand and draw a card. That makes sense. So the reason we see Jerry going for the island here is given that Kevin's passing on turn four, this heavily implies a heavy Cryptic Command deck. Minimally, there's going to be one copy here. So he's trying to choke Kevin on actually casting Cryptic Command. Not necessarily better than going for the Breeding Pool, but that wasn't in play when the World Breaker right. was cast. That was actually fetched in response. So that's why we see him go for Basic Island. Kevin will play a copy of Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, and now play Prismatic Omen and pass the turn. Omen plus Scapeshift requires six lands to be lethal. So we are back to Thompson. He'll untap turn five with a 5-7 in play, multiple lightning bolts in hand. And now on this turn, that Thought Knots here should be excellent, and unless Kevin's hand is just obscene. Jerry, going to be careful to make sure everything is uncounterable. He'll play Thought Knots here. Kevin's hand has two lands, two scape shifts, and a worm coil engine. Okay, this is a difficult hand to navigate. You can't take Kevin off of scape shift with the thought knots here alone. It's dead in two turns, remember that. Scape omen, scape shift, six mana. So that worm coil doesn't really feel like a card here. On the other hand, between then attack next turn and those two lightning bolts, Kevin's actually dead. Yeah, I assume we're going to see him go for the Worm Coil Engine on the following turn. Unless Kevin draws Cryptic Command, Jerry can attack for nine, put Kevin to three, bolt him yeah. to death. He'll take the Worm Coil. Here's Mattery Shaper and a pass. And now with the Mattery Shaper, his creatures in play are just lethal on their own. If, if G Kevin draws a ramp spell here, that fetch land in hand is two Lightning Bolts because of Prismatic Omen. Okay. That's something. It would be land, because land six, it's a mountain, and, and then you fetch it and you get another mountain, and that would keep Kevin alive. He drew Serum Visions. So if he drew a ramp off Serum Visions once again, that fetch land still works. Unfortunately for Kevin Jones fans, it was a land. It was a land. So game and match in three to Jerry Thompson. Red, green, Eldrazi. I mean, not... Not dead, still good. He's 3-0 on the tournament. Yep, Kevin uh, stumbled a bit in that match. Uh, Jerry found the um, Cavern of Souls, which actually came into play. It was pretty relevant in that match. Uh, so Jerry's deck looks sweet. Hey, if I can have some Eldrazi Temples every game, I would still register that every time. Yeah. That's <laughs> As we showcase there, 